Thank you for joining me in the History of Science collections of the University of Oklahoma Libraries. Let's take a look at three treasures from the vault that throw light on the story of Hellenistic mathematics. The Hellenistic period is the time between the conquests of Alexander the Great and the rise of the Roman Empire. This is the period after Alexander when the Mesopotamian accomplishments we explored earlier became widely known in the Mediterranean world. During the Hellenistic period, the intellectual center of activity shifted from Athens to Alexandria, from Greece to Egypt. And being Greek referred not to someone who lived in one of the little city-states, but to a new world culture that spread as a unifying force throughout the Mediterranean and Middle East. Euclid was in Alexandria at the time of the first king in the Ptolemy line and allegedly informed him that there is no royal road to geometry. Yet I wonder what Euclid would say to this copy, the first English translation of Euclid, which contains all sorts of pedagogical aids for schoolboys who knew no Latin. The Elizabethan mathematician and scholar of the occult, John Dee, contributed a preface advocating for popular mathematical education. When one turns to Euclid's discussion of the geometrical solids, this copy still has the first pop-ups. This is the first printed edition of Euclid's Elements of Geometry, published in Latin in 1482. The beautiful woodcuts are hand-colored in this copy. The text of the first page was printed in both black and red ink. The geometrical diagrams were quite difficult to prepare. The printer, Erhard Redolt, moved south from Germany and set up shop in Venice. To print the many curves and angles required, Redolt came up with the idea of forming the diagrams with copper wire molded around jigs or forms. This innovation enabled Redolt to print Euclid affordably and to go on to print the first editions of many notable works in astronomy and geometry. This little book will represent how the power of mathematical methods, particularly of Euclidean geometry, became evident in Hellenistic astronomy. Aristarchus of Samos, the Copernicus of antiquity, proposed in the third century BCE that the sun lies at the center of the universe and that the earth and other planets revolve around the sun. That work did not survive, but in this book, Aristarchus showed how to calculate the sizes and distances of the sun and the moon. From the second century forward, the sizes and distances of the earth, moon, and sun were known. This is the first printed edition. Hellenistic science represents the fusion of the cultures of the ancient Near East, ancient Egypt, and early Greece. This cross-cultural fusion is illustrated, for example, in the combination of the quantitative exact methods of Babylonian astronomy and the qualitative geometrical methods of Greek mathematicians and astronomers. Science is a story. What stories do you want to hear and tell about Hellenistic mathematics?